lost in my mistakes What looks to me like we is a canvas for your strength And my story isn't over My story's just begun And fail you won't define me Cause that's what my father does Yeah, fail you won't define me Cause that's what my father does Welcome to the American Campfire Revival. We are uh, together on our 58th day of our 100 day plan. And I've been looking at all sorts of images and movie clips of Braveheart, Scottish warriors in kilts, and Irish warriors who are not armed so much with swords as with the message of the gospel that just melts the hearts of the enemies of God like St. Patrick carried with him. And we've been talking about freedom and liberty and, and all the, the beauties of America that, that were purchased for us by brave and courageous members of the family of faith in centuries and millenniums gone by. And we wanna, we wanna pick up the mantle. We want to, re, uh, we want to renew the covenants of our forefathers and foremothers because this is a country that is worth fighting for. And it must be fought at the spiritual level, at the moral level, at the heart level if we're going to preserve liberty for our kids. So we are in the Father's house. This entire world belongs to Him and His children fill it up in every corner of the globe. So. Let's pray together. We've got about 11,000 people with us right now on Facebook Live. I encourage you to hit that share button on your phone if you're, if you're uh, wanting your friends and your family to join in live. Some people are watching on Instagram, but I just love when we're together live and we can pray together and we can uh, share this moment simultaneously. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, this whole world is your house. Lord, we no longer need to, to go to Jerusalem or Washington, D.C. or Mecca or any location on the earth to a brick and mortar building to find you. Your spirit now dwells within us, each one of us as members of the family of faith. Therefore, you have millions and millions of walking worship centers all over this world. Lord, we pray that you would magnify and amplify the power of your spirit within us. Lord, cause your light to shine from within us, manifesting in love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness. Help us to think of whatever is good and whatever is noble and whatever is right, whatever is praiseworthy, whatever is worth talking about, Lord. Help us think about those things. We love you, dear God. We praise you. We ask for you to humble us. Give us a spirit of repentance and faith, trust and courage to be like Patrick, men and women of courage, because we understand that the land of the free starts in the hearts of the brave. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, um, we've been talking about a brother Patrick. I've been wearing my Scottish kilt. Some have been making fun of me because of my kilt. They call it a skirt. It isn't a skirt. It's a kilt. It's a, it's a Scottish piece of warrior equipment. It allows you to, to urinate freely on your enemies after you've killed them with the sword. <laughs> Did I just say that? <laughs> you know, there's a lot of crazy stories and traditions surrounding the Scottish and the Irish and the Vikings and, and, and those of days gone by. But, you know, these barbaric warriors were transformed by the message that 
that turned them from enemies of God, citizens of the kingdom of darkness, to, to sons and daughters of the Most High God, of members of the family of faith and citizens of the kingdom of light. And they enlisted in the army of compassion and they transformed not only individuals and families and communities, but through their message and through their lives, they converted entire nations. And we have them to thank for this beautiful country that we live in today called the United States of America. And so I wanna pick up in part three in our final look at St. Patrick during our 100 day plan to bring America back to the God and the covenants of our forefathers. We understood that Patrick was enslaved at 16 years old by these Irish pirates who threw him into the bottom of a ship like live bait in a, in a, in a, in a, in a bait tank, took him back as, a ch as child traffickers and enslaved him, but he escaped and he had dreams where God guided him back to his family in Britain. But he had such a love for the Irish people and, 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 a, and a gratefulness for what God had done in his heart that he went back to Ireland to rescue and liberate the people that he loved. And he knew he had to start with the kings in order to reach the people. And he began to convert the kings and he began to convert the culture. And revival broke out and thousands and tens of thousands of people became wholehearted followers of, of Jesus Christ. But Patrick knew that personal revival must be followed by government transformation. Because if the government laws did not line up with the laws of the creator, they would eventually snuff out the ability of the people to live out their faith. And we see that happening in our country today. We see that happening in countries all over the world where people do not have religious freedom. So it's great that you have a personal faith. It's great that I love Jesus and I wanna live out my faith. But if the laws of our country do not line up with the loving uh, transcendent God's, uh, transcendent laws of the creator, those laws will become restrictive and they will snuff out your ability and mind to be able to worship God. And Patrick understood this. And so um, wherever Patrick went in this, in this pagan land of Ireland, he established a church, but not only did he establish a church, he was a church planter, he was a missionary, yes, but he also left behind something called Liber Ex Lege Moise, Moise, the book of the law of Moses. He left behind a law book for the civil government to be reformed and transformed. And it started with the Ten Commandments and the laws of the Bible written by Moses. These are not outdated, outmoded laws. These are good laws. These are laws that reflect the same God who, who created the law of gravity. The same God who creates the, the, the moral laws that protect you and protect our marriage and protect our family and children. He left them civil laws to reflect the moral character of God, and he left with them the books of the gospel. And so he gathered together Irish legal scholars and Christian church leaders. So legal scholars, lawyers, together with church leaders who all understood and loved the loving commands and laws of God and he brought civil law of Ireland into conformity with the loving, impartial laws of Scripture. Wow! No, that, that's not a theocracy. That's not some church-run government uh, country. No, what he's saying is that people who have transformed hearts can now transform corrupt governments. What a great thing. That's liberating. That's good news. That's what we want. If, if you're liberated from the prison that holds you back and the demons in your heart and the snakes in your head are extinguished by the loving commands of God and the gospel that sets you free to be who he created you to be, then people like you are the ones we want to be in leadership positions to make laws that enhance that, that protect that freedom and that reflect the loving laws of the Creator so that all men and women can flourish. That's what Patrick understood. Because if government was in opposition to faith, 
there would be a battle and one would win. Instead, he knew that they needed and they were created to work together. Government is God's idea, not just the church. Civil government is God's idea. He is sovereign over civil government and kings are under the rule of God, whether they acknowledge that or not. So that's what he did. And as he traveled through Ireland for 30 years, he traveled along horse trails. He might be killed at any time. And, and, and Patrick wrote, daily I expect murder or fraud or captivity or whatever it may be. But I fear none of these things because of the promises of heaven. I have cast myself into the hands of Almighty God who rules everywhere I go. He had perfect trust in God. I'm sure there were times where he battled his fears, but he understood that, that his job was to let love conquer his fears and do the right thing no matter what the cost. That's the kind of leadership we need today. It's the kind of man I wanna be. It's the kind of man I want you to be. It's the kind of woman that God calls you to be. Courageous, full of faith, fearless, trusting in the hands of Almighty God who can protect you from every enemy. There were no cities that had hotels or inns to protect him. There were, there were uh, no one there to, to help him. There were only farms and fortresses with terrorist-like warriors to destroy him and his friends. But he kept on. The Irish had been kept in a violent, terrifying culture of death for over a thousand years. Patrick speaks of being kidnapped or ambushed 12 different times during his mission to transform Ireland. And Patrick says, I came to the people of Ireland to preach the gospel and to suffer insult from unbelievers. I am prepared to give even my life without hesitation and most gladly for his name. And it is there that I wish to spend it until I die. Wow. Do you feel the passion in his, in, his, in, his, in his voice? Do you feel and sense the commitment in his, in his mission? And, and, and Patrick transformed not only the king and the queen and royalty, but children. And women and, and, and slaves were drawn to Patrick and his, and his mission. And the young people, they left pillaging with the sword to serving Christ and helping Patrick transform their nation. Wouldn't that be amazing today to see the college kids, the high school kids of our nation leaving this cancel culture, this social media uh, seduction, believing lies that lead to a culture of death and destruction and take up the gospel message that liberates and sets cultures free and help you and me transform America. That's what I want to see. That's what we're praying for. It's called revival. That's called revival. Together with his strengths as a church builder, as a lawmaker, Patrick was also a defender of widows and orphans. And he applied God's word to every area of life. That's what the church often doesn't do today. Today we apply the, God's word to my, per, my personal prayer life, to my personal devotions. But we need to apply God's word because it has lots to say about community, about your state, about your government, about economics, about, border, uh, about borders, about immigration, about race, about men and about women and about children. It has much to say about slavery and, and everything. And we need to apply God's word to all areas of our life. Why? Because I don't want to be imprisoned and enslaved in those areas, held back and, and, and shut down in those areas. We want to be free in those areas so that all those areas are areas of, of freedom and liberty and blessing. Not just for Americans, but for the entire world. As America gets back to the principles that made her so unique and exceptional in the world. Patrick's strength as a man, his passion, his fierce anger against tyrants. How many pastors do you know who love God and have a fierce anger against tyrants? We ought to. We should. Because tyranny 
is hatred and, and imprisonment and slavery to our neighbors. We're called to love our neighbors, and we need to fight against the tyrants. Together with his humility toward God, he was irresistible to the Irish people. Listen to this. Dr. Foster says this. Most surely did these qualities win the Irish Celt when they found in Patrick combined the terror of a warrior with the tenderness of a woman. The terror of a warrior with the tenderness of a woman. Now, that's not saying that a woman can't be a warrior. Okay? That's not get your, don't get your, don't let your kilt bunch up on you when I say that. What I'm saying is, there is no terror like the terror of a warrior. And there is no tenderness like the tenderness of a woman. Facts. The ferocity of a tiger with the gentleness of a lamb. Don't tangle with a tiger. I'd rather go up against a dog than a tiger. And the tenderness doesn't get any more tender than with a lamb. The gentleness of a lamb. Patrick saw people converted by the tens of thousands. He taught people throughout Ireland how to read. And he and his disciples founded over 700 churches in this pagan land with people wanting to kill him and cancel him and delete him and shut him down and censor him. And yet they couldn't resist the message of the gospel that were setting them free. Patrick taught the former Irish pirates to respect the sanctity of life. And many of you are doing that. God bless you. Keep on fighting on. Fight the good fight. The sanctity of life is, is crucial. It's essential. Every life, including life in the womb, every color, every race, every size of human being is worth fighting for. And the biblical laws that require equal justice for all. No room for racism in Patrick's mind. No room for favoritism in Patrick's world. No room for any inequality in God's kingdom. The greatness of Patrick is beyond dispute, Dr. Foster says. The first human being in history of the world to speak out unequivocally against slavery, nor will any voice as strong as his be heard again until the 17th century. Ireland became the first Christian nation outside of the Roman Empire. They spent their lives, Patrick and his friends, devoted to, to studying and copying the scriptures. The Irish had been big, uh, pagan barbarians and pirates the generation before, and now the Irish believers come bringing their Bibles and books to mostly pagan Europe. And listen, without the Irish, the world that came after them would have been an entirely different one, and a world without books and our own world would never have come to be. The Irish missionaries converted the Scottish people, the Scottish Picts and warlords, and then the Irish and the Scottish believers together converted England. And then they went and converted Europe. And the gospel began to spread. They began to convert Gaul, which is France and Germany and beyond. Patrick was a giant of the faith. He's not just this corned beef and cabbage, green eggs and ham, drinking green beer, chasing snakes, wearing a leprechaun, uh, not wearing a, uh, a shamrock <laughs> on his belt, hanging out with leprechauns. He was a giant of the faith, like the heroes of Hebrews chapter 11, those of you Bible readers the, the Faith Hall of Fame in chapter 11 of Hebrews. I think if it ever gets uh, an updated edition that we get to read in heaven, I think Patrick's going to be included. He, quote, by the faith, conquered kingdoms, performed acts of righteousness, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, from weakness was made strong. And Patrick followed the biblical plan for reaching and liberating any nation. The God who was with Patrick is with us today. Canada can be liberated. The Philippines can be liberated. Kenya and Uganda can be liberated. France can be liberated. Russia can be liberated. Afghanistan can be liberated. 
El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico can be liberated. The, the God who was with Patrick is with us today. May we believe God and work for the transformation of entire nations, not just the transformation of individuals, but entire nations, including America. Father, we ask for this that we're learning tonight to become reality in our lifetime. If not in our lifetime, Lord, in our children's lifetime. And may we be stepping stones by our faith and our courage to make it come to pass. We love you, God. And we ask for this revival on the 58th day of our 100-day plan. Come, Lord Jesus, work by the power of your spirit in your children. Amen. It's so great to be with you tonight. I, uh, I hope this is continuing to be a blessing with you. I am going strong. I am not losing steam. I am ready for every other night for our 100 days. And uh, I hope you will join me. Uh, if you've missed out on any of these, uh, uh, these days, you can always go back. You can watch them on, on Instagram. You can watch them on Facebook. Uh, you can check out all the cool stuff that we've got for you to, uh, to make your declaration of hope, being in revival. Uh, you can go to my website and check out all the different uh, ideas to start conversations there. Um, just an honor to be with you tonight. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow.